Live from the McLaren Technology Center in Woking, United Kingdom, welcome to the grand finals of the McLaren Shadow Project. Please welcome Mike Channel and Nikki Shields. Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to the McLaren Shadow Project Grand Finals. Wow. How's everyone doing? Amazing. Yes, amazing indeed. It is very, very exciting to be here. Now, over 12 months and more than half a million applicants. And we are down, can you believe it, to the final three drivers. Now tonight, we'll watch our grand finalists battle it out to win the trophy and a life-changing prize. Being crowned McLaren Shadow Driver and becoming a member of the McLaren eSports team. How That's cool right. is that? Absolutely huge. So we're here in the McLaren Thought Leadership Center, which is the ultimate setting for this spectacular racing showcase. It's like a spaceship or something. You know, when you look about, when you talk about McLaren, you think about cutting edge design and technology. So, you know, check the place out. I know. I feel like we should be, uh, yeah, taking off in a minute or two. I know. This really is like the mothership. Or yeah. I feel like it could solve Brexit. Oh, maybe, maybe that too. Over the next hour, we'll discover which of our drivers has what it takes to join the McLaren Shadow eSports team. It's more than just skill and speed. It's going to take everything they've got. It is. Now, for the very first time, you might have noticed, we have a live audience right here in the amazing McLaren. Technology Centre here in Woking. Guys, how are you all feeling? Yes, that's what we like to hear. It's always a good relief when the crowd reacts. <laughs> um, now, we want to get you guys involved at home as well too, so please do join in the conversation by using the hashtag McLaren Shadow. We want to hear what you think of the drivers. Do you like them? Do you love them? Do you hate them? I don't know. Just tell us. Share your thoughts. Yes, but now... It's time to meet the three drivers who are battling it out to become the newest member of the McLaren Shadow eSports team. It's time to meet our grand finalists. Take it away. So all the way from Portugal, please put your hands up and welcome Nuno Pinto. Nuno is our 29-year-old driver. He uh, qualified on R Factor 2 and is going to be looking to perform to his best abilities tonight. And our next driver from Spain, it's Miguel Ballester. So Miguel is going to be hoping to follow in the footsteps of his idol, Fernando Alonso, by becoming the McLaren Shadow Driver tonight. And put your hands together to welcome, it is our all the way from South America, our Brazilian racing driver, Igor Fraga. So Igor is one of the youngest drivers at just 20 years old. Quite incredible, really. He's also a driver in the real world. Uh, he is the 2017 Formula 3 Brazilian champion. So there we go. They are our three Finalists. Yeah, it looks like they're ready to go. So, now that our grand finalists are all absolutely in position, let's give you a quick recap of the competition so far. Over half a million gamers entered, taking on the world's best to win the ultimate prize in esports. Fighting for a seat in the McLaren Shadow esports team. Seven competitors made it through to the finals at McLaren's Thought Leadership Center. We've seen our players put through their paces across five games, a real-life racetrack, and tested by McLaren Applied Technologies, the most advanced motor esports program in the world. Now we're down to the final three. Igor, Miguel, Nuno, to face their toughest challenge yet. The McLaren Shadow Project Grand Finals. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We're putting the drivers through the same paces we put our Grand Prix drivers through. Tonight, there can only be one winner. One life will be changed. Only one will become the McLaren Shadow Driver.
Wow, just a reminder there that it has been such an incredible journey so far for the drivers, but it all leads to tonight. And well, we've made the journey too, haven't we? The really yeah. stressful journey to our studio. It's very comfortable now. <laughs> uh, now, there's been so much support from family, from friends, and a few admirers yeah. too. Yeah, and there's one person who particularly wants to pass on a message, and it's fair to say he's a bit of a big deal around here. Be in your best behaviour for this one. Congratulations, gentlemen. You are in the McLaren Shadow Grand Finals. You guys have been put through all the paces, just like our Grand Prix drivers. Mental, physical, racing. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I suggest you grab it with both hands. Oh, some words of wisdom there from the man himself, Zach Brown. Now, yesterday, our international all-star shoutcasters, Ali Tack and Alex Goldenboy Mendez, guided us through the races. And the good news is they're here with us again today. Guys, have you recovered from the drama yet? I'm not sure we have. Thank you so much, Nikki. I honestly, no, I don't think we have. I mean, it was an insane day of competition for day one here at the McLaren Shadow Grand Finals. It was crazy. We had five races on five different game titles, one on mobile, one in VR. We had sim racing. We had real-life track laps. We had human performance tests. It took us from seven competitors down to just three. This is what it's all about right here. Wouldn't you agree, Ali? I mean, all the drivers are getting poked and prodded, aren't they? We've, we've tried them every which way but Sunday uh, now we're going to turn the pressure all the way up I mean how would you hold up in these uh, circumstances I wouldn't I'm glad that <laughs> I am here rather than being out there but they seem calm cool and collected all three of them and they deserve this opportunity they've worked so hard to get to this point and there's no doubt in my mind that they are prepared for the challenges that not only lay ahead in this competition but also lay ahead once the finalist the one to rule them all if you will will finally become a part of the McLaren eSports team. Huge opportunity for them, Ali. Yeah, today's grand final, though, it's a clean-cut affair. Our three drivers just have one race to complete, an all-or-nothing decider for who becomes McLaren's shadow driver. It's down to one 12-lap game on Sebring on R-Factor 2. Win the race, win the prize. Oh, boy. Now, to get you fully up to speed on today's three finalists, let's actually take a look at their route into yesterday's intense finals. Here's how it all went down. Now, we are just hearing that the final results are in. In seventh place, Henrik. Sixth place, going to be Jan. Fifth place, Marcus. In fourth place, it's going to be Ibrahim. We have our three drivers, Igor, Miguel, and Nuno. Great love. Oh, Henrik, he's going to hit that side wall there. He's going to lose control, and he's going to go off into the grass. Oh, 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 Ibrahim struggling to maintain control of his car. Eagle Ooh. from 140, big old bump Miguel. there. And Ibrahim's heart rate is just soaring. Beautiful sweet line through turn three, and that's a loss on the rear. Oh, Igor no. spins out. First place for Miguel, Igor takes second, and then Nuno taking third. All right, tons of action, tons of drama yesterday, and it didn't stop there because earlier on, our finalists had a very special visitor in none other than McLaren's new Formula One driver, Carlos Sainz. Let's see how they got on. Hey guys, how are you? Carlos, nice to meet you. How are you? Hi. Encantado. So tonight is the big night. Nervous? Uh, not yet. Excited. Maybe, Maybe later. Excited. Yeah. Excited. Yeah. The main thing I would say to you guys is, apart from being fast, which we all want to be fast, I think you should try and be as consistent as possible. Mm -hmm. 
what a team really looks for is that you manage to do those five, six laps within three tenths, you know, so consistency is important. Speed, obviously, but I really trust that you guys are fast because you must be freaking fast at these things, <laughs> faster than me, probably. How do you guys uh, get ready for this tournament? How do you prepare mentally? Uh, do you do anything specific? Do you get into your zone or, or something? We are playing a lot of different different yeah. games, but I always try to think what I have to do to be quick and what the games like uh, actually work. So I think um, if I keep it thinking, that keeps me more focused and more calm, and it's it's mm. good for me. Yeah. I just try to, to relax, enjoy it. And you? No comerse la cabeza demasiado. No comerse la cabeza demasiado, quitarle un poquito de importancia de la que tiene y ya está. I tell you one thing that I don't like about the um, simulator sometimes is that after lunch, I don't know why, but I am slower. Probably so more relaxed. More. You're a bit more relaxed, a bit lazier. Yeah. You don't put so much focus. <laughs> so don't have nothing for lunch before. <laughs> that's my yeah. that's my tip. You're Good day. Much. Thank you. I wish you luck and enjoy it. As you said, enjoy it a lot. Okay. Thank Cheers, guys. Well, there we have it. Some expert advice from Carl outside. I'm, I'm wondering whether the three finalists are sitting in there thinking, I'm really hungry at the moment. Yes, <laughs> yeah. They really took his advice seriously. Yeah, can't take, uh, can't. Can't do better than Formula One driver advice, I don't exactly, think, probably, so. Exactly, exactly. Now, in addition to me and the boys, the very lovely Frankie Ward is with us again over in the Player Lounge, hanging out with our social guru, Black Panther. And uh, together, the pair have the greatest hairdos, basically. Well, I would say this side of the M25. I think so. We've you got will see in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, here they are. There they are. Look at, those ha look at that hair. I mean, it's just... Marvelous. I cannot compete. It's marvellous. Although, <laughs> I'm not going to get a matching haircut to you, my guy. No, I really, wouldn't. Really I wouldn't. sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Oh, maybe you could match mine. Anyway, the socials have been buzzing non-stop since yesterday's nail-biting action. Guys, what's the uh, action like uh, today? What's been going down? Well, there has been a lot less players in here, but you probably won't be surprised to hear that there's been way more tension and the players have been seriously focused on practicing R Factor 2. And I've been hanging out with Black Panther, aka Theo, who has been controlling the socials for the whole week. And Theo, what have you discovered from the public? What have they been saying? A lot of passion, a lot of support for our drivers, and you can see it come through on the chat, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you can't be surprised because you're from this community theory, but what are you asking them to say to you tonight? What, what do you want to know from the public? So, for the most part, I want to know, who do you think is going to come out on top? Get chatting chat to me with a hashtag McLaren Shadow, and also in the chat. I want to know what you think, but I'm going to ask you that in a moment because we haven't got time because earlier on today, I actually got to hang out with the three grand finalists and pick their brains about how they're feeling about tonight's final race. Igor, Nuno, Miguel, our three grand finalists. And I don't even need to ask them if they're nervous because I can just sense the tension in the room. But Nuno, I'm going to come to you first, my friend. How does it feel to be in the grand final? It feels amazing. Yeah, it feels amazing. It's been a really long journey so far. Some practice, some, some gym work, a lot of, uh, of, of practice here at the, the McLaren. Yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far. And I know that your girlfriend and your adorable chocolate Labrador, Scott, are waiting for you at home. Are they going to be watching you and cheering you on tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all my family, all my friends, all the people uh, by, by, back where I live, yeah, they're all watching it. Well, hello to you guys watching and supporting Nuno at home. And I'm going to come over to you, Eagle. Now, you did come into this competition with the most experience. Are your eyes firmly on the prize tonight? Uh, yeah, of course, you know, I mean, you enter to the competition and just try to win. So I, I'm, I'm um, you know, trying to do my best and achieve my goal, which is winning this competition right now. And I'm going to come over to now Miguel with his translator, Alex, who's been fantastic this entire process. Miguel, what actually made you even enter this competition? Pues, tío, ¿qué, ¿por qué te, has, qué te ha hecho entrar en la competición desde el principio? Bueno, solo es McLaren, ¿no? Y el, el nombre es mítico y, y solo eso ya, ya basta para entrar aquí a competir, ¿no? Eh, las ganas, el nivel que había, todo, todo me, 
me iba bien para competir y nada, y aquí estoy. Uh, well, McLaren, I mean, do you need to say more? What, what a big name in this, you know, what a big brand. Um, so that was really what encouraged me to get involved with it. And uh, it's just an absolute legacy here, and it's just great to be a part of it all. Well, I believe that legacy will be made tonight. So congratulations to all of you for making the grand final. Good luck, and I guess we'll see who is crowned the shadow driver at the end of tonight. All right, cheers for that, Frankie. I could definitely feel the tension there. I think there was three guys desperately trying to keep their nerves in check. And it's no surprise, really, given what's at stake here. After tonight's winner's take all, winner takes all race, we'll be inducting a new member of the McLaren Shadow team. Now, here at the McLaren Shadow Project, it really embodies their entire attitude to racing here at McLaren. This is no normal esports competition. Speed and skill alone aren't enough. It takes so much more. To be honest, I quite fancied my chances to us, what these guys had to go through. I'm sort of glad I'm leaving it to the pros now. Yeah, you stick with the sofa, Dick. Yeah, I right. probably should. <laughs> now, these drivers have been through the same vigorous tests and simulations that McLaren's F1 drivers have put through each year. It's pretty much the same process that Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris will be doing right now to prepare for the season ahead. So, we are about to find out who is the best all-rounder to become the shadow driver. And here's what they've achieved so far. Here at the McLaren HQ, our finalists in the Shadow Project are not just going to be tested on how fast they can drive. Oh, no, 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 my friends, because this has to be the hardest job interview in the entire world. Basically, they're going to be starting with what we call our general health assessment, um, which really just paints a picture of what kind of condition they're starting from. Then we're moving to stimulus detection, which is our gamer's ability to really pick up on cues uh, in the environment around them. And our third test is uh, around central processing, the gamer's abilities to take this information they've just you know, gathered from their environment, and then it's how well they manage to process that information, how fast and how accurate, and how well they can sustain that. And finally, Clayton, physical actuation, so what does that involve? Um, well, for us, um, it's really about assess assessing the, the, the fitness and the, and the strength of these drivers, which bits we have to build up in our performance signature in order to take someone from a gaming environment and maybe one day uh, putting them on a, an F1 podium. The McLaren Applied Technology Simulator, a unique piece of technology that mimics real-world racing. A tool for McLaren and their drivers to work closely in engineering the perfect car and the perfect setup. Our players are being given the opportunity to test their gaming skills in a hyper-realistic setting and given access to top-class engineers and analysts to help improve their lap times and data sets. Everything from their acceleration, braking, steering and even heart rate are being closely monitored in a controlled environment to generate a performance map of how they can develop as a driver. This data not only assists our finalists in the Shadow Project competition, but will be collated within the DNA Driver Development Programme to improve future generations of McLaren race car drivers. Players, we salute you. So far, we've seen our finalists battle it out in our Shadow Project Championship. But now, it's time to see how they fare on a real track. finalists will get the chance to drive these beasts around the track as a real-world test of their skills and performance. They will be observed by the McLaren Applied Technology team throughout their practice run, finishing with six scored laps, where the player that drives the best and not just the fastest will win. Is it enough to make your dreams come true, Igor? We still have uh, two days left in the competition, so there's a lot of things going on and I will just keep pushing. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully. What was that like for you? Com compared to this morning, it was much faster. The, the track was much creepier. I was, I was on it now, yeah. Miguel, did you enjoy your time in the McLaren car today? Sí, es eh, alucinante, ¿no? Una experiencia única que, que solo se puede vivir gracias a McLaren. Estoy muy agradecido a ello. Eh, la verdad que... No puedo expresar con palabras lo que siento ahora y solo felicitar a... After a long, grueling day here at Dunswold and a total of over 140 laps race, the data is in for the McLaren team to assess. Let's head back to the studio to find out the results. Rudy, can I get a lift?
wow, there's some brainy people over there at McLaren Applied Technologies. I don't think I know anyone else who loves data quite that much. Well, I do. Oh, all right, nothing it's a fair to be, call. Nothing to be I'm a nerd. We I'm love data. Nerd. We love data. Mm. Uh, what an awesome day they had, though. Now, let's take a look at how our finalists measure up to their exacting standards. My name is Igor Fraga. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Brazil, Ipatinga and I'm very happy to be here right now. Hi, my name is Nuno Pinto, I'm 29. I'm from Viana do Castelo, from Portugal, and I'm here at the McLaren Technology Center for the McLaren Shadow Projects Finals. Soy Miguel Ballester, vengo de Málaga. Sabía que el nivel era muy alto, eh, iba justo para ser el mejor en semifinales y he trabajado mucho, he elevado mi nivel para estar aquí en las finales. I've been into sim racing since 2008. It gives me opportunities to, to drive cars that I will never drive in real life. McLaren have a huge history of motorsport. It's where uh, my racing hero Ayrton Senna had so much success in his career. And I'm very happy and proud to be here on the McLaren Shadows final. I've seen a lot of new cars, a lot of cool cars. It was a privilege to see the behind the scenes at the McLaren Technology Center. Estoy muy emocionado. McLaren para mí significa eh, historia, leyenda, eh, y estoy muy contento de estar casi tocando el triunfo aquí en las finales. Winning this competition against the best in the world is going to mean a lot to me, and uh, it will give me a, a bright future. Sentí mucha emoción porque eh, había mucho nivel. Eh, somos muchísimos jugadores y la verdad que eh, estoy muy emocionado de, de ser finalista. Winning the McLaren Shadow Project will be a life-changing experience, so for sure I will be pushing a lot and give all of myself to it. Wow, it really is great to see just the passion from mm. our finalists because we must remember this really is a life-changing competition. Once one of our racers enters the McLaren Shadow Team, nothing will be the same for them again. If we think last year's winner will definitely agree because here is Rudy Van Buren to tell us what it's like being a McLaren official simulator driver. The win from last year turned everything upside down. I literally went from a desk job nine to five to living the dream, basically. We ended the competition end of November, and then the 1st of January, the whole new journey started. I certainly went to being a lot abroad. I've been to Saudi Arabia, to Japan, to America. It's more than I could have wished for. My journey started very early at the year of eight when I got a go-kart for my, for my birthday. But then that was a seven-year period that we went through it. National Championship, European Championship, and then in the end it stopped. In this break I discovered sim racing at the time where sim racing was growing rapidly. I grew with it, did it for ten years, and then I saw an advert on Facebook about WFG. I kind of figured if I don't give it a shot and I don't win, then I can only blame myself. When the lights went off after it was actually recorded here at the boulevard, I've seen shots where big DJs or something put something on Instagram and then show their phone what happens with the likes and stuff. And my phone went nuts and it literally kept buzzing until it was empty. And then was the moment when you start realizing, okay, this is something special. I won World's Fastest Game at the end of November and the Rage of Champions was the first weekend of February. I knew it just after Christmas that I was going to Riyadh, and then the pressure was on. The first race I did was against Tom Christensen in the NASCAR, and then to lose by only two tenths, that definitely raised some eyebrows there, because nobody expected that one. As soon as we got over the line and we went off the throttle, I could hear the crowd screaming. That was just a major mark for sim racing in general, not just to me, but just, okay, this is an eSport guy who gets to the big event and then performs. When you're in a home sim, do you need to be fit? No. But then you get to McLaren and we've got the racing sims here where, for example, the braking forces are pretty much equal to what they get in a real car. So you're braking above 100 kilos with your left foot. Then the steering forces are made as well. Of course, a real F1 car has, has power steering and people think, oh, it steers light. But imagine taking a corner at 3.5 G, your arms are going to be 3.5 times as heavy. So yes, it's heavy again. So uh, you break a good sweat and um, we're driving 150, 200 laps a day. 
which is three to four racing distances. So physical part is a big, big part of that. My 2019 will be a continuation of 2018. I'll stay on as McLaren Sim Test and Development Driver and next to that I'll make my debut in an international racing class. So obviously I'm very excited about that and next to that I'll stay on as Shadow Ambassador. So 2019 is going to be just as good if not better than 2018. That man is literally just living out his dream, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, there's no it's, it's line yeah, when he says that. I'm <laughs> so, so jealous. Oh, never mind. Mm. <laughs> one, one day, one yeah, day, we perhaps. can but dream. Now, there are so many trophies here at McLaren's HQ, but there is only one that our drivers are desperately vying for. And that, of course, is the McLaren Shadow Project trophy. Absolutely. And uh, just in case you were wondering how seriously the teams here at McLaren take this competition, here are some details. I've got them written down on how this bad boy was designed and made. Look at that. So it's got a lot of long words. That's why they've written them down for me. So the trophy is made with a <laughs> ceramic filled epoxy resin. Uh, it takes over 30 hours to 3D print that. Uh, and it was made by McLaren Racing's rapid prototyping department. So these are the guys who make prototype parts so that they can be tested in the wind tunnel. So they can rapidly produce stuff once the designers have an idea, produce the part, get it in the wind tunnel, get it tested. Um, and it's coated in black chrome, which I think if you had a very polite conversation with McLaren Special Operations, you might just be able to get your own McLaren road car in that color. You clearly know the right people, Mike. I'm, Not I'm yet, out with the but I'm going to find them in this building. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is incredible, the amount of work and detail, but that yeah. just summarizes, you know, yes. what goes on here it's at the McLaren That HQ. F1 approach, isn't it? Exactly. Well, that's the prize at stake. But more than just a trophy, tonight's winner will secure a place on McLaren's official eSports team. So the moment is here. I believe the grid is set to get this final underway. Look at them. There we are. Looking fantastic, <laughs> boys. Ali and Golden Boy, over to you guys. Thank you so much, Nikki. And yes, it all comes down to this. One chance, one shot. The final race in the McLaren Shadow Project. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at what the finalists will be facing in this year's epic Final. For the grand final race, the three drivers will be taking on their biggest challenge yet, 12 laps on the Sebring International Raceway, America's oldest road racing track. Over the 3.7 miles of this legendary circuit, our finalists will need to ace every corner, master the straights, and perfect each overtaking opportunity. Racing on R Factor 2, this is the last chance to prove that they have earned the title of McLaren Shadow Driver. We've now got Rudy's gold standard with a special message from the man himself. Let's take a look. Right guys, first of all congrats for making it to the final. It will be the 720S GT3 in R Factor 2. Sebring is a very, very difficult track and it will definitely test everything you try here during the week. May the best man win. Alright, so we're going to be taking a look here at Rudy Van Buren's lap here on Sebring. And let's just break this, this track down, Ali. What should we be expecting? What should the drivers and the viewers be expecting here? All right, well, coming off the start-finish line with a ready run over past that cracked, gristly concrete. The bumps are gone. We're on the smooth asphalt now, which stretches around the majority of the track. We'll see that concrete again, though. Don't worry, you oh, won't miss it for too long. Uh, we're heading now through the first sector. In fact, that's just a little kick mark for it. And down towards this middle sector, the first hairpin, turn seven already. It's all about braking here, finding your braking point, and it's a massive overtaking opportunity. A car can easily get up your inside there. Yeah, they need to be very careful about this. This is going to be a big moment too, right? Because our, our drivers, they're okay with taking a little bit of risk. And we've seen Miguel in the past, when he has that opening, that brief opportunity, he will take it. So turn seven is going to be one to look out for, Ali. This section is all about limiting that rear traction loss. Rudy's doing a fantastic job, actually. Watch him working that steering wheel through the double left. The uh, McLaren 720S GT3 is a real beast. So it's that right foot, just sensitivity on it, and see him a little bit of correction there as he heads through tower. 
And, and let's actually talk about the car real fast, right? Like, what else should they be expecting with this vehicle? What, what, what bells and whistles does it come with? Well, the, the, the GT3 version of the 720S is 90% new parts, parts put on the car to homologate it to racing specifications. So not a lot of road car left there, much more sort of screaming Banshee put on <laughs> instead. It's a bit of an animal, and uh, these drivers all have their work cut out. Here we go, up the back straight though, one corner remains, it's the legendary Sunset Curve. We're gonna lose the asphalt again onto that cracked old concrete. This place used to be an Air Force base, and you gotta keep inside of the white lines, bump over the little cracks. Look at the suspension working on the car there. Rudy working the steering wheel, powering down towards the end of the lap. Very tricky to do, and a fantastic gold standard set by our incredible driver. Actually, a really, really good setup on that one, and there you have it. That was the hot lap from Rudy Van Buren. And, you know, I, I do got to say, like, a couple things to point out there right at the end. You had mentioned that, that final turn, that sunset bend. Right. We got to be very mindful of that. There's that white line there. Drivers need to keep their car past that white line. They need to make sure that they're within the bounds. If they go out, it, there's a lot of space over there. If yeah. they go out, they might be in trouble. Well, you and me, we were sitting here and we had the adjudication team right with us, chatting yeah. away to them in depth about that corner because uh, the concrete goes on beyond the track limits. It's, a, it's very arbitrary in a sense. They just paint a white line onto the concrete and say, this is allowed, this ain't allowed. Uh, so it's very tempting for the drivers to go four wheels over there. They will have a three warning system. Go off once. All right, okay, go off twice. You're starting to get in danger. Go off three times, and now you're in real trouble, mister. Mm, that's right. And, well, also, we just want to let everyone know, right, make sure that you're social in the chat, right, Ali? That's very important. Absolutely right. Don't forget to comment in the chat with who you're backing to take the trophy and use the hashtag McLaren Shadow to show your support. Alex, who do you think is going to be bringing home that epic trophy? You know, man, kind of got I, I'm excited but for, for all these competitors, but I'm rooting on Miguel, man. I'm feeling him. I think this guy, he has that right aggression. I think if he really takes advantage of the opportunity, Miguel could be walking away as our shadow driver. That's an incredibly bold claim. What about but, you? Uh, yeah, all right. I mean, if you're going Miguel, then I'm going to go Ego or Nuno. <laughs> Ego oh, or Nuno. come on. That's not even remotely <laughs> fair. Well, make sure, don't be like two. Ali and, and give us one <laughs> driver. Make sure you use that hashtag McLaren Shadow, but the drivers are ready. We are ready here in McLaren HQ. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to find out who will become our McLaren shadow driver. And we are off on Sebring. Let's get this bad boy rolling, Ali. Bumping down the concrete on the offline straight and Igor goes to the inside, takes that defensive line, that green Mercedes team. McLaren even on the inside line, blocking things off behind. Miguel now drops into third. You saw that little blink of emotion on his face. He knows he's got a lot of work to do now to push forward through this pack. But a great start from Nuno, who moves up to second place. And that yellow car mm. looking very predatorial on the back of Eagle. That's right. Always uh, keep in mind on the colors here, folks. You're going to have Miguel in purple, Nuno in the yellow, and Igor in the green. And the cars will be represented in-game as well. So make sure you guys are paying attention to that. Also, ooh, interesting, interesting there. And Nuno need to be careful there or else he could have lost some control. But I did want to take note. You're also going to see something very interesting heart rate monitor, the BPM, the beats per minute, that is what's actually gonna be on the right side of their representative country flags. And that tells you the whole story of the pressure that these drivers are going to be feeling here, Ali. That's right, well, we're looking at Eagles, BPM here. This is someone who absolutely aced the uh, McLaren MAT test, somebody who really has all the characteristics of a professional driver, but we're starting to see him uncharacteristically high uh, with that, uh, with those beats per minute. 136, a little bit higher than the other two drivers. Maybe he's uh, just trying to settle into his race, get rid of those nerves. Well, he's going to be in that pole position, Ali, and you have to consider that for him, I think for anyone really that's been keeping track of the McLaren Shadow Project, you kind of looked at it and said, this is going to be Igor's competition to lose. He has been the odds-on favorite, scored top in every single category, consistent performer, done very well throughout the duration of this entire competition, qualifying through the Logitech G Challenge. He has been a force to be reckoned with. Meanwhile, you have guys like Nuno, who, Nuno, he's coming into this one a relative unknown. He's, you know, he's done his homework. He's been in this space for uh, quite some time. You know, I know that you've heard of him, but 
for I guess a lot of people, he I don't think folks kind of put him in this spot in that top three, did you? You're absolutely right that he's a little bit less known to the McLaren Shadow Project especially. We had Igor and Miguel both compete in the semi-finals, qualify through that way. Uh, Nuno got a, a kind of a pass straight to the grand final, straight to the finals here. Mm -hmm. uh, so not somebody who we're so aware of, but certainly proved himself yesterday by qualifying into this grand final. Mm -hmm. And now, now he's here, up to second place already. A great start from him. Although he'll need to do a little bit better if he wants to catch Igor here, who for my money is starting to get those booster jets working. He's pulling ahead at the front. And once he gets that lead, it is very hard to wrestle that away from them. And also, just to give everyone an idea on the, the grid placement as well, when they qualified, they earned points from the qualification games that happened yesterday. And the way that it panned out was Igor in first, Miguel second, Nuno in third. So for Nuno to take that second place spot, pretty big here. But all that matters is first place when you're talking about the grand finals of the McLaren Shadow Project. And this has been all Igor. I like, though, that the, all the drivers are keeping this one very close, very competitive. But how can, let's say, Miguel, for example, how can Miguel start to climb his way back into this? Let's, let's look back here at Miguel. You can see that concentration was seen all through the competition on his face cam there, just looking up at the road and zoning in. He's an incredibly focused driver, uh, just 22 years of age, uh, the young man from Spain. He'll need now to collect himself. It's been a difficult, tumultuous race start for him. And now it's just about getting rid of the nerves, breathing, breathing deeply, controlling that stuff in your, your body, and then your driving will come with it. Racing cars are faster if you don't drive them at 110%, but rather dial them back a little bit, get it to 90%, get it to 80%, and get that smoothness coming through the wheel. Miguel will need to make sure that he's calm. And he's going to be a little far back here. Hopefully, he will be able to gain on Nuno. And Nuno has been hot on the heels of Igor this entire time. Nuno, though, going a little off on the side there, just needs to be careful once again. Gets a little gets a little dicey out there on the track, but I think that, you know, it all applies to him as well. He got to calm those nerves down, relax, as his heart rate actually has climbed up. And if you notice, uh, Igor, same thing there. His heart rate has escalated now. He's at 144, whereas Nuno's at 136. These guys were calm before, but as this race has progressed and continued on, you can see that they're, they're feeling it. For my money, this is a battle that's waiting to happen. Nuno has concentrated. He's uh, relaxed into this race, I should say. Uh, a lot better, I think, than Igor has. Nuno's pace right now, I think, is working upwards. He's getting faster and faster out in track and beginning to close that gap. Igor, for my money, he knows about that. And that's why we're seeing those BPMs climb up a little bit, seeing the gap come down a little bit. Our favorite in this competition, let's face it, he's been the favorite all the way through, Igor. Exactly. He's under pressure. Yeah, yeah, he is. He, it, you have to talk about that. The mental factor that comes into this. I cover a lot of different esports, work across the industry in a variety of titles. And I can tell you safely that looking at this right now, it is you, the track, and in the instance of Miguel, for example, the people that, that are in front of him, he needs something to happen. He's hoping that something can happen so that he can catch up on Nuno and Igor. And if you're Igor, he's looking straight forward at nothing but just track. And he's calm. You've seen his, <laughs> you his, his demeanor, right? He, you know, oh, oh, wait a minute. Got to be a little careful here, especially as you go across this turn. Like, you know, the cracks on the road, that thing will just throw you off. But he has that calm demeanor inside, obviously, feeling it as the heart rate rises. But all he has really is himself in this race. That's all he has to rely on here. And I cannot, I cannot even imagine like what that, what that feels like. And most esports, you're dealing with like team games, right? In this, it's you, the car, the track, and and any mistake, and that's on you. Lap four of twelve, and first and second are separated by only 1.2 seconds. This race is very, very tense indeed. There's so much on the line for these drivers here at the McLaren Shadow Grand Finals. A space in the McLaren eSports team and that incredible honor of becoming the Shadow Driver. Pressure's on for our three drivers. So, Nuno is so close, so close to Igor. He knows it. You said it before, Ali, he knows it. 
he just he has to just keep on riding the lines the way that he has been. And this is honestly this has been very exciting because Igor is just now going to focus primarily on just playing defense, forcing him, forcing Nuno in a really tough position so that he does not overtake. And Nuno is going to apply that pressure onto Igor so much so that he's hoping that Igor is going to make that one fateful error that could lead to him collapsing in this. We're four laps in at this point, 12 laps total in this one race, winner take all. And wait, oof, okay. Got it, you know, again, right? I always get a little nervous when I see them go off on the side, uh, just attacks. This car is a beast. <laughs> and I get so worried that like if something, something's just gonna go, go wrong. But that is the pessimist in me, Ali. You gotta Be trust the him. You gotta him. learn to trust Be him. Be the optimist boy. for me, bud. You gotta learn to trust him. We're heading down the Ullman straight. Nothing much to go wrong while you're going in a straight line. It's just on the infield there that yeah, the, the, uh, the cars will fill the pit lane. The mechanics will all be working away on their on their bits and bobs while the massive races that go on here at Sebring will take place. It's an amazing history that McLaren has at Sebring. Uh, Bruce McLaren, of course, winning historically here in 1959 uh, at the US Grand Prix. He was 22 years old at the time uh, and 104 days. And that was a record for the youngest winner in Formula One that held until Fernando Alonso. Uh, won a race in 2003. It's an enormous amount of time uh, that Bruce McLaren, of course, the great founder of McLaren, uh, held that record. From here at Sebring, these days, though, it's the host for a, a slightly different race to that, one that we're seeing all on eSports, on a digital platform. Igor leading it with Nuno chasing him down still. Miguel, for my money, dropping back a little bit. That frustration starting to show in his driving style and coming through in his lap times. Yeah, and Miguel, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again here for those of you who are joining us for the first time. This dude, he, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. You can tell when he is frustrated, you can tell when he is happy, when he's elated, when things are going right for him. And right now, things are simply just not going right for Miguel. He has fallen way back of the pack barely see Nuno and Igor, they're gone. They're off in the distance. There they are right there. And, and you said he, it's reflecting in his driving. This is something that I, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly, how does he regain his composure here? What, is he, what does he have to do? Because Nuno and Igor are just driving exquisitely. The McLaren Shadow Project is brutal. It's absolutely brutal. It pokes the drivers. We look at them in all sorts of different ways uh, through testing their bodies through testing how they drive on a circuit in real life uh, in, in simulations such as our factor two um, I think we've found a weakness here in Miguel and I think that weakness might be how he reacts to adverse situations how he struggles perhaps to come back from difficult moments uh, and that's what we're seeing here he'll need to reset mentally he'll need to splash that sort of imaginary cold water on his face yeah. get the shoulders down become calm again and uh, maybe then he can bring it back but lap six or 12 we're halfway through this race and he's at a huge disadvantage at the halfway mark here folks and if you're just joining us you are witnessing a great great race being put together by Igor Fraga he has been off to the races started in that top position and since then has not looked back it has been turn after turn just so well done from the Brazilian Question remains though, can he maintain this for another six laps? If he does, there's no doubt in my mind that he's gonna be walking away. I don't even think we'll need adjudication at that point. He'll be walking away as the McLaren shadow driver, gaining that life-changing opportunity to join the McLaren eSports team. This is what it's all about right here, folks. And if you are a, a competitor in sim racing across the world, you are envious of these three competitors because of what it means to race for such a prestigious team such as McLaren. And Igor knows that, and that's why he's been performing the way that he has been thus far. Igor had an amazing year last year, of course, winning the Gran Turismo World Series. Now uh, he'll be beginning his 2019 in a great style, qualifying for the McLaren Shadow Project through the Logitech G Challenge and making it here to the final. He's now whipping it round this track and putting together a performance which surely looks like he may be able to take this. It's uh, halfway through this race and he's absorbed all the pressure that Nuno's put onto him. 
I want to look back, though, Golden Boy, to the semi-finals. We were watching Eagle. We were saying these kinds of things about him. And at the circuit of the Americas, he tripped over a curb, flew it sideways, and was mm -hmm. off the track in the blink of an eye. Yeah, and that's why at any point in time, you, you have to remain relaxed. And funny enough, you know, we, talking the, the heart rates, right? You look at the uh, BPM of all of these uh, competitors. Nuno, he's at 154. He's climbed up. You can feel it for him. Miguel, though, still remaining calm despite the frustration. And that's actually because he studied fitness and bodybuilding. This guy has put a lot of, of effort into health and as a person who's done so himself throughout 2018, you know, because of the Titan Games and, and all the things that I've worked on with throughout physical competitions in, in television, like, I have experienced that myself. It's so important. Everyone thinks that when you're a gamer and you are are just sitting down playing video games all day that oh yeah you can just sit there and you can just game and it doesn't really matter like if you're you know, out of shape or whatever but no when you want to put that time in and you you even saw it when when Rudy was talking about what he went through with the sim racing and the tension and he, he was like yeah no I'm, I'm building a sweat like I'm going crazy inside of this 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 machine essentially you have to remain fit you have to remain focused and fitness health and fitness is a big big part of that you're right, and, and what you're touching on there is how much bodily fitness affects the fitness of your mind and your ability to concentrate. Couldn't agree more, man. The, the two things fit together and they go hand in hand. You need to maintain uh, yourself as a you know physically and also keep concentrated, keep focused. We talk a lot about focus in uh, GT racing as well. Of course, it's a huge it's a huge thing, especially in endurance races. Just 12 laps here at Sebring, so uh, not quite the 12 hour, but at the same time, it it's all about not overstretching your mind. Focus on the corner ahead of you, focus on what you're doing exactly right now and perfecting that, and the next corner, well, you'll deal with that when it gets there. What you say on the podium, yeah, you'll deal with that when it gets there. Don't think about anything that you don't need to. Keep your mind clear and keep your car on the track. Very, very difficult uh, to do, easy to say hard to practice. Uh, but this race has been so grueling and so long. 12 laps, as you see there at the top of your screen, folks. And there's one thing, uh, Nuno Pinto knows a lot about marathons. This guy actually does mountain biking marathons, by the way, which is kind of crazy because it's something that I have really enjoyed watching from home numerous times. And Nuno Pinto lives that lifestyle, right? And I think that he, he's, he's prepared for this task only because of that grueling activity that bring, that mountain biking MTV brings to the table here. And I don't know if you noticed in Igor's uh, side, but Igor was uh, a little tense around a couple of those turns. He's to uh, be very careful because Nuno, he'll pounce on that moment. Before this race, I looked at Nuno and I thought that's a, that's a nervous dude. That's somebody who uh, is gonna be suffering out there. We're turning the pressure up so high here. And uh, he's someone who's really gonna have to, uh, yeah, learn to deal with that or or maybe that'll be his undoing. Out here on the track, Nuno has been doing an incredible job of uh, keeping it clean, keeping this driving very, very smooth, but also applying pressure to the car ahead of him. Uh, that's that's so difficult to do, and it's all about just, just shouldering what you've got, forgetting about it, and trying to keep looking forward and keep attacking. Nuno currently three seconds behind Igor, and reflecting on Igor, we talked about the backgrounds of Miguel as well as Nuno, but. Igor Fraga won the Formula 3 Brazil Academy Championship. And that, you apply this kind of, of pressure that he's feeling here. If you apply what he had learned from racing in the real world to this, that is, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to downplay this at all because what this is is an opportunity of a lifetime. But man, he has been in this spot before. This guy at 20 years old. At 20 years old, I, I think I was like trying to figure out what to do regarding like university and college. I think I, I, I'm pretty sure. Meanwhile, this kid, 2017, he's over here winning some championships. Mind, mind blowing stuff. He's, he's incredible, Igor. And uh, you know, someone who's looked throughout the competition as the full package. We've seen all the sort of catch up bits about the MAT testing that McLaren have been putting these drivers through. And Eagle won every single one of them. He's always come out on top. He seems like somebody uh, who is an incredible driver. And that's of course because he is. You say it, he's done it in the real world. He's done it in sim driving. And uh, now here he is today showing all of us everything he's learned and putting it 
to the uh, to, to demonstrating it uh, here at the absolute pinnacle stage. And, and it's not just in our factor two. Remember, five games that these drivers had to compete in yesterday. And as far as the average points per race go and what they managed to earn, Nuno earned three points per race. Miguel, 3.6. Igor, 5.3 average points per race. He was coming within first or second on a regular basis in order for him to be able to achieve that. And that's not even accounting his performance in the semis, where he was also just on fire the entire time. Incredible. It's been incredible to watch. Uh, at the same time, lap 9 of 12 now, so we're three quarters of the way through this race. Look back at that purple car of Miguel, who uh, seemed so promising coming into this grand final. Sometimes you wake up, you get in the car, you get in the sim, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't come to you. You just don't have the pace that you expect. Every step of the way, Miguel has been pushing Igor, or he's even been exceeding Igor's skills out there on track. Miguel's beaten him plenty of times in this competition. It could well have been his day, but by now, we're near the end of the race, and I've got to say, I'm starting to write off the young Spanish contender. Yeah, well, you know, he never finished lower than third throughout the day yesterday, and unfortunately for him, I think third place could be his undoing here because of the way things are panning out. And I think what's also just as impressive is that Igor, he, he, is, he has taken this McLaren 720S GT3 to the limits. He has pushed this every time that you think that Nuno could have a moment, could have an opportunity to, to catch up to him. Igor just goes further and further and further. I don't know what it is about this guy and, and how he manages this car, but it is clinical, man. Clinical. He's able to tear away from the pack so efficiently, so consistently as well. Yeah, shades of his racing hero there on the head and center, of course. Uh, the young Brazilian uh, looking up to his fellow countrymen. Uh, he's done an incredible job today. And it's, I mean, it looks kind of, it, it, we don't want to say easy, right? But there's three cars on track. There's not, yeah. there's not a huge field out there. He's not weaving between uh, slower classed cars or anything as you might an endurance race. At the same time, even the simplest things, even the things you've practiced, become so difficult when the microscope is on them, when you're just concentrated and everything relies on you getting it perfectly right. Well, speaking of perfectly right, <laughs> and to kind of reflect on what happened yesterday, a look back, when we were on R Factor 2, Igor did not finish. Great point. He did not finish. He actually got disqualified for, I, I believe, what was it? He, he did a stop and go. Uh, he jump started once. It was a stop and go inside of the pit. He was too fast in the pits. Like, that is huge. Him to take away all of that, and I don't think Igor was prepared, honestly, because if, if I'm correct, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, um, he comes from GT Sport, which is, yes, it is a, a very core, hardcore game, but, you know, it, you don't really get jump starts in, in, in GT games, <laughs> right? Uh, whereas R Factor 2, they don't play around. <laughs> so well, they don't play around, exactly. Everything is, is in your control. You have to manage the start of the car. You have to manage your pit lane uh, procedure. But what this tells me about Igor is he's the kind of guy who's like, hey, okay, trick me once. All right, fine, fine. I'll, but you ain't going to get me again. But you ain't going to get me again. I'm going <laughs> to study all night. I'm going to sit up there. I'm going to punish myself yeah. for that mistake, and I'm never going to make it again. And I think that's why he's impressed so much uh, in these McLaren assessments, because it's that ability to learn. It's that ability to adapt to new situations that we're seeing writ large here on the screen. We are close to the conclusion of the McLaren Shadow Project Grand Finals. Igor has been in first place the entire time. Never looked back. Nuno has not been able to catch up. Miguel is so far back in the pack, it feels like he's competing yesterday. And now, as Igor is right here at this finish line, quote unquote, you have to wonder, Every turn becomes that much more tense. Every straightaway becomes that much more worrisome that you're going to break too late, too early. Who knows? We've seen Igor fall in it, just slide into the grass before. This is where the tension builds up for him. Every turn is going to matter, Ali. I don't know why you do this to me, Golden Boy. I was just relaxing. I was just, hey, I was man. just taking a moment. I need everyone to know how serious <laughs> this is. This is it. This is it. A life-changing opportunity for Igor. It's in his sights. 
career-defining opportunity, career-defining moment for this Brazilian. Ali, this is it. Here we go, and it's down the straight for the penultimate time, the Ullman straight, turn 17 coming up, and he'll begin the final lap after that. It's been an absolutely incredible run from Igor Fraga. So much we expected from him in this race and this competition, and so much he has delivered. Look at him round Sebring, down onto the concrete and bumping across the line, beginning lap number 12, and surely a lap of honor for the young Brazilian. Here we go, folks. A final lap for the ages. I Igor Fraga is right there, and he just needs to maintain his course this final time. He is seven seconds in the lead. He's peeled away. He's proven that he is the best. The only person that can defeat Igor Fraga is Igor Fraga. This is it, the tension. That is a great, great point because after the race, the adjudicators will be looking through every single thing these drivers have done. They'll be sort of going through the black box, if you like, making sure that there weren't four wheels over the, over the lines, making sure that these drivers have behaved themselves out there on track. Igor Fraga looks like butter wouldn't melt in his mouth, but <laughs> that guy could get penalized after this race. We could see a change in the order. And for me, though, I would feel robbed. That's right, the race is one part of the story. After this, we go to the adjudication, where our adjudicators will work diligently to ensure that we have, without a shadow of a doubt, the winner of our McLaren Shadow Project. No doubts at all. It all comes down to this. Let's see if this is Igor's moment. He's gonna come around this corner here. Igor is right there, folks. Glory is in his sights. History is being made right here in the McLaren headquarters here in Woking, United Kingdom. And the Brazilian, 20 years old, he has thrived everything in front of him. He has thrived, he has succeeded. This is the final turn, Ali. And Igor Fraga is going to finish this race in first place and if you're Igor you have to be so happy with what you just ran and look at him he knows it this is his race to win first place for the Brazilian Igor Fraga absolutely incredibly run that race and what an asset McLaren have found themselves here in the young Brazilian what an incredible member of their team Miguel great sportsmanship there with a small round of applause for a winner second place across the line of course Nuno Pinto so these two drivers going home but the new shadow driver is Igor Fraga now of course let's not get ahead of ourselves here Ali we got to make sure that the adjudication is all set up and good to go but if you look at that race there's not a lot that you can really take away from Igor Fraga there man I know our adjudicators are going to be you know going to work right now to figure this out but Ali I mean initial analysis that was pretty much as clean as you could possibly get. Uh, we, we didn't always have all eyes on Igor, and he was absorbing so much pressure from second place, especially in the first, I would say, third of that race. It's tempting when you're a driver in the lead to just push a little bit too hard sometimes to find just that little bit extra speed. I don't know, looking at his face there, did he do it? Did he not? I mean, we'll find out in a second. Adjudication right behind us, pouring through the data right now. That's right. And that is it. They've crossed the line. Now it's over to the adjudication side because they're going to need to review all the replays for any infringements before we get to the final result. It's already underway. So let's actually take a look at some of the exciting moments from that race once we get an opportunity to go to here. And, and I think there were tons of great moments from that one because, and, and we'll, we'll make sure to bring that up in, in a few for all of you at home. Uh, the start of the race, very exciting stuff. Nuno gained as close as he possibly can get. Igor Fraga, though, I mean, he just raced a glorious, glorious race. And here's the start. And there you see Miguel. He was on the in the second place position. Nuno tried to fight his way into first. And even right here, pretty much hugging the back of Igor. But Igor peeled away, never looked back. That's right. It was in those early laps, those early moments, that Nuno really had his best shot to challenge Igor. I think he would have needed to have done it then, to have done it early in the race break the young Brazilian's momentum, get you know, become a thorn in his side, if you like. But once that gap approached 500 feet, 
difficult to dive bomb kind of range. Then uh, Igor got away and uh, it was beautifully run from him. Nuno, great pressure though exerted in the mid race. Yeah, and, and he needed to do that. And I think that was a, a big test for Igor. And Igor the entire time just kept going further and further and further away. They're all racing the same car, but for some reason when Igor Fraga is behind the wheel, it, it, it just becomes part of him. He, he synergizes with the car and just finds a way to go faster and faster. Each turn becomes cleaner, each, each straightaway, he flies through it. It's insane how he's able to do that. And, and Miguel and Nuno have shown great, great skill throughout the McLaren Shadow Project, but Igor Fraga was just one step, he was a step further away than everyone else. And again, it boils down to this day in history for these drivers, you know, Miguel, Nuno, both of them woke up this morning and, you know, maybe they had a bit of a headache, maybe they didn't, maybe they got off the wrong side of bed. Anything could have happened to have make minute changes to how they handle in the car, how they deal with competition pressure. I've got to say for Miguel especially, I felt as though maybe he has a little bit more pace than that on some days of the week that maybe he didn't show just today. Oh, but the adjudication process that is going on behind us is going to determine and settle once and for all who will earn the title of McLaren Shadow Driver. The adjudicators are working diligently behind us, making sure that every single turn is analyzed. There's only three drivers. So because of that, they're able to just scope in on the task at hand and ensure that every single turn was as clean as you could possibly get. But I, again, just initial analysis from that, there was just nothing glaring that Igor did. Every turn was great. And besides the beginning there, I don't even really think Igor was in position for anything. I love it though, I love that emotion that. as he crosses the line. So happy and uh, really the picture of the competition for me. Fantastic stuff for Igor, for Igor Fraga and there he is again. I love seeing it. That's definitely going to be a picture that will live on for years and years years to come. Congratulations, Igor, who crossed first. But now we go to Frankie, who's actually in the back with the adjudication group to let us know what's going on. What are you seeing back there, Frankie? Thank you very much, Gone Boy. That's right, I'm in race control where they're checking the last few details before we're able to officially announce the winner of the race and therefore the shadow driver of 2019. Now, lead adjudicator Dan Hawkins has been controlling proceedings backstage all week. And Dan, what do you think of the standard of driving this week? Because you have 10 years of sim racing under your belt. Yes, that's right. Uh, it's been phenomenal. The guys have really stepped it up today as well. Uh, yesterday was really good. The level today, like, it was really clean. The guys have, have been phenomenal. Uh, I think they've taken it all professionally and I think they've represented themselves really well. So in other words, if you were a McLaren, Dan, would you hire any one of them? Uh, I take all three probably. They, they have been really good. A credit to themselves and a credit to the entire series. And what do you think the Shadow Project means for the future of e-racing? Yeah, it's uh, it's a good stepping stone for sure for for these guys to get on the platform that they need and and they deserve. Especially uh, Igor, he's he's done amazingly all series and in other series. Um, but McLaren have done a great show with the entire project, and I think it's a great asset to their brand. And talk to me about your team as well, because obviously they're still hard at work now, but they've had quite a big job this week, haven't they? Yeah, so uh, the guys have done really well. Um, they've been on top of it. They've made sure the, the standards of adjudication are great. Um, the driving has been great anyway. And they've just, it, the entire team have come together. And how sure are we that Eagle has this in the bag? I can't possibly comment on that, I'm afraid. Honestly, even if I ask you nicely? <laughs> nope. Okay, well, two people who probably have more eyes on this race. Well, not quite as much as these guys backstage, but they've certainly been watching it very closely. Uh, our golden boy and our platinum wonder man, it's Ali and Alex. Thank you so much, Frankie. Actually, uh, I think, yes, they have as many eyes as you possibly can put on this. And for just three drivers, there is a lot to break down to make sure that this is, you know, undoubtedly, the winner of the McLaren Shadow Project, also Platinum Wonder. I, I think that works out really well for you. I can't, I can't I think that's believe that Frankie didn't get the answer out of Dan. I, yeah, I really I'm, wanted I'm, to I know am, who I won. Am, you know, <laughs> Frankie, definitely not the best investigator. Yeah. Uh, not the best investigative push journalist. That, push that, get the, yeah, get the answer out. But you know what, she's Throw hilarious, so I'm actually okay <laughs> uh, with that, so. <laughs>
<laughs> but you know what? This has just been such a, a wild ride, Ali. And I guess, you know, one thing I want to ask you is if if – You've been doing this for such a long time. I mean, this guy is Mr. Esports <laughs> Racing right here, folks. Like, all bow before You're him. Too generous. You, you've uh, seen this. You've casted so many incredible races in your time across a variety of different titles. Um, this race, obviously, so important. The pressure. We keep using that word. But what is this moment, I guess? Like, what does this really achieve for the entirety of esports racing? Because McLaren coming in, like... Like, I'm from the States, and even I know what McLaren is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everyone knows what McLaren is. What I find incredible about this whole competition is the innovation that we're seeing uh, in how these competitions are run. Only McLaren could have put this competition together. When you think about uh, all the elements that put it together, the interest in Formula One and GT racing, incredible. Yeah. But just hearing adjudication... They it's have an over. answer for us. Yes, that's right. We are just hearing that the adjudication is now completed. So for that, let's hand it over to Nikki and Mike, who are ready to run through those important final results. Take it away, guys. Well, there we have it. Gosh, it is nail-biting stuff. I mean, you could cut the tension in here with a knife, mm. couldn't you? Now, of course, we saw how the race ended, but as we know, everything can change in adjudication but the final positions are in. So, in third position, I can reveal that it is Miguel Ballester. <laughs> Congratulations there, uh, well done to Miguel. Okay, so that leaves us, we're gonna go straight to the first place, the winner. So if I could have quiet, please. So the winner of the McLaren Shadow Project is Igor Fraga. Well, I am sure that is a huge relief for the Brazilian driver. It was an absolutely incredible race for him. It was a light to flag victory. Well deserved. He really did bring his A game yeah, to the table. The question all the way through. Really good. Right, so while he's celebrating, let's take a look at some of his best moments in the competition. family, please welcome Rudy Van Buren, who is last year's winner and is the official McLaren Sim Test driver. Come on in through, Rudy. There we go. Huge round of applause. You can relax now, Igor. You can smile. You can celebrate. This is your moment. This is the moment this man's life changes forever. <laughs> How does that feel? It feels amazing. You know, it's hard to describe, really. Well, go on, give us a go. You've got to try and describe it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is a lot of effort uh, that I have been putting on. Like, you know, it's the entire my life dedicating in the motorsport. So, uh, you know, it cannot, be, if, it cannot be better. So I'm very, very happy. Well, well deserved. 
because it has been an absolute pleasure to watch you over the last couple of days competing. Uh, so that's it. That is the end of this year's competition. I can't believe it. From half a million competitors down to this one, Igor Fraga. Thank you so much to all of our drivers, sponsors, everyone at McLaren for making this happen. It's been an absolutely incredible journey and we're thrilled that we've been able to share it with you guys. Thank you from everybody here, the team at McLaren, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.